Hi everyone, today we'll be going over accounts, October, November 2021, paper 3, 1, question number 1. This is structured paper 3, which consists 6 questions, each of 25 marks, and we are also given a time limit of 3 hours. So we will be attempting to solve each question under 30 minutes. And this question number 1 is from section A, which relates to financial accounting. Without any further delay, let's get started. ENPLC is a manufacturing company. And its statement of changes in equity for the year ended 31st December 2020 was as follows. So we are given the rights issue of shares, final dividend, bonus issue of shares, interim dividend, transfer, and evaluation of premises and profit for the year. For the first part of this question, we need to state which bookkeeping entry reduced the ability of the company to pay dividends legally in the future. So whenever we're talking about dividends, it is always associated with the retained earnings. So let's have a look at the retained earnings section, which is given right here. So the balance, opening balance was 190. Then there was rights issue of shares, which does not affect retained earnings at all. We are giving out final dividend, which is obviously being deducted from the retained earnings. Then we made a bonus issue of shares. All right, so the bonus issue of shares was 50. And if we were to keep our reserves in the most flexible form, the 50 would have been reduced from the share premium. But instead of doing so, we actually funded our bonus issue with our retained earnings. So this is the reason why the company might not be able to pay dividends in the future legally. Because obviously the bonus issue of shares should have been funded by the share premium. But since we funded it with our retained earnings, it reduces the balance in our retained earnings from which the dividends are to be paid in the future. Right? Let's write it down. So we can just see that uh, debiting the bonus issue of shares to retained earnings because it, be, it is being funded by the retained earnings. So that's debiting the bonus issue of shares to retained earnings. rather than the share premium. This concludes the first part. Now we can move to the second one. We are given additional information. Uh, let's have a look at the question first. For the second part, we need to prepare the statement of cash flows for the year under 31st December 2020 in accordance with IAS 7. All right, so whenever we're talking about cash flows, we actually divide our cash flows among three activities. So the first one is operating activities. And in this section, we include all of the cash in and cash outs that we record in our income statement, right? Then we have our investing activities. And for investing activities, this is related to all of our non-current assets. And finally, we have the financing activities, which actually relates to our capital, which is the shares, uh, share premium and reserves. We will be starting with our operating activities section and in this section we always start from profit from operations and what we know is that we were given profit for the year in our question above right so the profit for the year is given right here which amounted to 10,000 but we need to include our profit from operations and in order to figure out our profit from operations we have the formula right so profit for the year is actually just the difference between profit from operations and our finance charges so if you are to figure out the profit from operations That's just going to be profit for the year plus the finance charges. And we already know the profit for the year to be 10,000. Now we just need to figure out our finance charges. In order to do so, we'll have a look at this additional information. So on 1st January 2020, the business had a bank overdraft of 42,000. So this is actually the opening cash balance right 
and we are given a bank overdraft. So this is actually a negative cash balance. And it paid an interest of 3000 on the overdraft during the year ended 31st December 2020. Whenever we're talking about interest, it is associated with finance charges. So this 3000 is also included in our finance charges. Let's add that. So we have plus 3. Then we have to look for any other finance charges. The second information deals with depreciation, which is not associated to finance charges. For the third one, we are given machinery. And this is a non-current asset, so it does not really associate with our finance charge we can skip it for the fourth part again we have delivery vehicles which is the non-current asset we will skip that for the fifth part we are given debenture and debenture is always associated with interest because debenture is a kind of loan that the company takes and in return they have to provide a certain interest and the interest here is going to be 10 percent of the debenture amount which is of 200,000. by the year end only six months interest had been paid so finance charges actually include all of the accruals as well. So we need to include the interest charges for the months that we use the debenture. And we're given here that we issued the debenture on 1st April 2020. Let's calculate the months. So the months we use the debenture is going to be April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. So this is going to be nine months. We need to add the interest for the nine months. Let's figure out the debenture interest for nine months. So that's just going to be 200,000 times 10%, which we can write it down as 0 0.10. But this will give the debenture interest for 12 months. We only require the interest for nine months. So we will be using unitary method, multiplying it with nine and then dividing it with 12. So this gives our total debenture interest for the nine months to be 15,000, which we need to add to our finance charges. So that's plus 15. Okay, then for the sixth part, we are given working capital. It is not associated to finance charges. We can skip it. For the seventh one, we are told that the directors plan to expand the factory during 2021 using funds raised by the debenture issue. Okay, so the 3,000 and 15,000 are the total finance charges. This gives our total profit from operations to be 10 plus 3 plus 15, which is 28,000. We will be starting our cash flow from this particular amount. Let's do that. And we are preparing the cash flow for ENPLC. We also need to write down the statement of cash flow. This is for the year ended 31st December 2020. And what you know is that the amounts are given in thousands, so we can record it in thousands as well. All right, we will be starting from profit from operations. And this is the cash flow from operating activities. So this is the operating activities section. All right, this amounted to 28,000. Now, like I said before, for the operating activities section, we always include those um, headings that we actually include in our income statement. So let's have a look at the above information in order to figure such headings. We already worked on the first part. For the second one, we have depreciation. So depreciation is something that we record in our income statement, which means that this particular heading will be adjusted in our operating activities section. So the depreciation charges for the year total 112,000. What we need to know is that Depreciation is an expense, right? But it is not a cash expense, meaning that we do not actually pay out cash from the company for the depreciation charges, right? So this does not relate to cash, which means that this amount should not be included in our cash flow statement because in our statement of cash flows, we only include the cash ins and cash out. So cash ins are those cash that we received and the cash outs are those cash that we paid out to some other parties. And depreciation is neither of those, which means that we should not be including this amount. But we've already included the profit from operations, right? And in order to figure out profit from operations, we need to uh, treat depreciation as an expense, meaning that depreciation was deducted in order to figure this amount of 28,000. So that deduction should not have been included. So we need to add that amount of depreciation back to our cash flow statement. So let's add our depreciation amount. 
and this amounted to 112,000. So we can record it as 112. Let's have a look at the above information again. So we are done with the second information. For the third one, this relates to the disposal of machinery. All right. During the year ended 31st December 2020, some machinery was disposed for 47,000. So this was actually the sales value that we received. Then this had originally cost 92,000 and the depreciation of 31,000 had been provided. So we already have the sales value. Let's figure out our net book value, which is going to be the difference between the cost and depreciation charge. So that's 92,000 minus 31,000 which gives our total net book value to be 61,000. So we should have received 61,000, but we only received 47,000, which means that there was a loss. So the loss amount is going to be the difference between net book value and the sales value. So that's 61,000 minus 47,000, which gives the loss on disposal of machinery to be 14,000. Again, we're talking about machinery, which is associated to non-current assets. And like I said before, we actually divide our cash flow statement into two, into three sections. And one of them is the investing activities, which deals with the non-current assets. So this disposal should have been mentioned in our investing activities section. But this loss of 14000 is deducted as an expense in our income statement meaning that the profit from operations of the amount 28,000 has already adjusted this loss of 14,000. We've already deducted it, but this should not have been the case. In order to rectify this, we need to add the loss on disposal of machinery back to our statement of cash flows. Let's do that. So we figured out the loss to be of 14,000. All right, let's have a look at the above information again. Mm, for the fourth information, we are given new purchases of delivery vehicles that is associated to non-current assets, which means that this will be recorded in our investing activities section. Then we have debenture. Again, debenture is a form of capital, right? So that will be included in our financing activities section. Then we have the working capital. All right. So working capital is actually just the difference between current assets and current liabilities. And what we know is that the working capital of the company, excluding the bank account and accrued interest, increased by 45,000. So the difference between current assets and current liabilities increased by 45,000. During the year ended 31st December 2020. So we can just easily... Uh, understand this as the increment of current assets by 45,000 and whenever we're talking about assets if there is an increment in assets there is definitely a cash outflow let's look at the example so if we are purchasing furniture so furniture increases right but in order to increase our furniture we need to pay the amount in order to purchase that furniture so cash definitely goes out so that's a cash outflow so we will record this 45,000 of the increment in working capital as a cash outflow, which means that this 45,000 must be deducted in our statement of cash flows. Let's do that. We have increment in working capital, which amounted to 45,000. Now we figure out the total of these four amounts in order to figure out our cash from operations. Let's do that. So cash from operations. That is going to be 28 plus 112 plus 14 minus 45, which is 109. Then we need to adjust our interest and tax in order to figure out the net cash flow from operating activities. We are not given any tax related information, but we definitely have figured out our interest paid above, right? And we're talking about interest paid, not the total interest for this particular year. And for the debenture one, we were given that by the year end, only six months interest had been paid. So the actual interest paid was 3000 for the bank overdraft and for the debenture that's just going to be 200000 times 10% times 
we're only going to figure out the interest charges for the six months. So that's six by 12. That's going to be 3,000 plus 10,000, which gives the total interest paid to be 13,000. So this was the amount that was actually paid, which means that this is the cash outflow. And outflow should be recorded in our statement of uh, cash flows in a bracket, right? So we record this interest paid of 13,000. Let's do that. Interest paid. And that's of 13,000. And it's a negative because it's a cash outflow. Now we can figure out the total. And that will be our net cash flow. from operating activities that's 109 minus 13 which gives our net cash flow from operating activities to be 96,000 this concludes our operating activities section now we move on to our investing activities section which deals with the non-current assets let's have a look above now for the Third information, we were given that some machinery was disposed for 47,000. So this is the value that we received by selling our machinery, which means that 47,000 was the cash inflow, right? So we need to record this amount of 47,000, which is going to be positive because it's an inflow under the heading of sales of machinery. Let's do that. So we have sale of machinery which amounted to 47,000. Let's have a look at the given information again. For the fourth information, we are given that several new delivery vehicles were purchased during the year at a total cost of 185,000. So this is the total amount of delivery vehicles that we purchased. And whenever we're talking about purchases, we always need to pay some amount, right? So this amount is actually cash outflow that we paid in exchange for new delivery vehicles. So we need to record this amount of 185,000 as a cash outflow, which means that this is a negative amount in our statement of cash flows under the heading of purchase of new delivery vehicles. Let's do that. Purchase of delivery vehicles. This amounted to 185,000. That's a negative because it's a cash outflow. Then new machinery costing 106,000 was also purchased. Again, we're purchasing, which means that this amount was actually paid out by the company. So this is a cash outflow under the heading of machinery. So we can just record it as purchase of machinery. And the amount was 106,000. It's a negative because it's a cash outflow. All right, let's have a look at any other information that we need to record under our investing activities section. We're already done with this. Uh, this relates to debenture, which is actually to be included in financing activities. Working capital, we already recorded this. Then last one was just the plan for expansion, which means that we have included everything in our investing activities section. So we can easily figure out the net cash flow from investing activities. All right. So net cash flow from investing activities we just need to add these three amounts so that's 47 minus 185 minus 106 which gives a total of negative 244 which is going to be the net cash flow from investing activities this concludes our investing activities section now we can move on to our financing activities section which deals with our capital and liabilities let's have a look above so what we know is that the company issued a 10 percent debenture and while issuing this the 200,000 is being received so that's cash inflow to the company so we need to record this issue of debenture as a cash inflow in our statement of cash flows let's do that so that's proceeds from issue of debentures this amounted to 200,000 okay and we also have to look at above statement of changes in equity we know that we also issued right share 
and this increased our cash holdings by 100 plus 80 which is 180,000. So obviously this is a cash inflow as well. We need to record this in our statement of cash flows. So we can record this under the heading of proceeds from rights issue of shares. This amounted to 180. This is a cash inflow, so that's going to be a positive amount. Let's have a look at the statement of changes in equity again. We can see that there has been cash outflow for dividends. So that's final dividend and interim dividend, which amounted to 25,000 and 15,000. So the total is just going to be 25 plus 15, which is 40,000. And we're paying out this amount, which means that this is a cash outflow, right? So we need to record this as a negative amount in our statement of cash flows under the heading of dividends paid. Let's do that. We have dividends paid, which amounted to 40,000. That's a negative. So this concludes all of the information that we needed to record in our financing activities. Now we can move on to figuring out our net cash flow from financing activities. This is just going to be the total of these three amounts. That's 200 plus 180 minus 40, which gives the total of 340. Okay, now we need to figure out the net increase in cash and cash equivalent. There can be a net increase or there can be a net decrease as well, but we can see that there is only one negative and this positive is obviously higher, which means that there's going to be a net increase. Let's write it down. So net increase in cash and cash equivalent this is just going to be the sum of net cash flow from operating activities net cash flow from investing activities and net cash flow from financing activities so that's going to be 96 minus 244 plus 340 which gives our net increase in cash and cash equivalent to be 192,000. now the main purpose of statement of cash flows is to figure out our closing cash balance. In order to do so, we just adjust the net increase or decrease to our opening cash balance. Let's write our opening cash and cash equivalents. So that's cash and cash equivalent at 31st December 2019. This will be the opening since our closing date is at 31st December 2020. Let's have a look at the above information. We are told that on 1st January 2020, which is the opening date, the business had a bank overdraft of 42,000, which means that the bank balance at the opening date was negative 42,000. Let's write it down. That's 42, but a negative. Now we adjust the net increase to this opening balance in order to figure out our closing cash balance, which is going to be cash and cash equivalent. at 31st December 2020. So that's 192 minus 42, which gives our closing cash balance to be 150,000. This concludes our second part. Now we can move to the third one. We need to advise the directors whether or not the performance of the company is satisfactory. We also need to justify our answer. So if we're talking about performance, let's talk about profit. We know that there was a profit, but the profit was only of 10,000, which seems to be quite low. Let's write it down. The company is making a profit of 10,000, which seems quite low. Okay, nextly, we figured out our total dividends, right? We included in, the, in our cash flows and the dividend speed was 40,000. So we can clearly see that the profit for the year was only 10,000, whereas the dividend speed was 40,000. And what we know is that dividends is a part of the profit. And this part is way higher than the actual profit, right? Let's write it down. Dividend speed. 
are higher than profit. Let's have a look at our retained earnings. We can see that the opening balance for the retained earnings was 190, whereas the closing balance for the retained earnings was just 70. So there is obviously a declining trend in the retained earnings. And this might be due to the fact that the dividends paid was way higher than the actual profit for the year. And this is not a good thing in the long run because this might mean that um, there might be no dividends in the future. So that's a risk. Let's write it down as well. Decreasing retained earnings can lead to no dividends in the future. So considering these factors, we can say that the performance is quite okay at this period of time, but in the long run, the performance of the company is surely to be declining. So that's a bad thing. So we can just conclude that the performance of the company is not satisfactory. of the company is not satisfactory. This concludes the third part of this question. Now we can move to the fourth one. We need to discuss the decision to issue the debenture to fund the planned expansion. So we just need to list out the points that we know about debentures. So the first thing is that debentures need to be repaid in the future. So debentures need to be repaid. Then we also know that the interest must be paid on debentures regardless of profit made. So no matter whether the company is going through a loss, the interest on debentures must be paid. You can write it down as interest must be paid on debentures regardless of profit made. Okay, for the third part, uh, we know that the venture is a long-term liability and the long-term liability obviously increases the gearing for the company. You can write it down as well. Debentures increase the gearing for the company. Let's have a look at our total share capital, which is given in our statement of changes in equity. So the total for the share capital is 710, whereas the debenture is of 200, which means that the gearing will still remain pretty low. We can write it down as well. Uh, the gearing remains low okay then what we know is that the venture does not dilute the ownership because it is a long-term liability and not an addition to our share capital the venture do not dilute the ownership and finally the venture may require some collateral you can write it down as well All right, so this was a five marks. Yeah, I think that's enough. So this concludes our fourth part of this question as well as this entire question. If you found this video useful, make sure you like the video and leave a comment below and make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future. Thank you.